With the film, um, how involved was was Mohammedu, and to, to, did he get to see any any cuts prior to? Uh, he was he was in very involved in the in the sort of prep of the film in terms of you know as a resource for telling us you know what actually did this person say what did this place look like what was the color of the cell you know we tried to make the Guantanamo feel absolutely accurate to what he remembered mm -hmm. and so. And you uh, did interviews with him, which Taha saw, didn't you? Because I remember the yeah. first time I saw Taha's acting, he was doing, Muhammad, he's got quite a pronounced blink, hasn't he? And which yes. uh, Taha mimicked exactly. And, and um, Yeah. I did quite a lot of it pre-interviews with Muhammad, sort of on my phone when, when I went to visit him in Mauritania. And that was sort of the basis for both, both sort of parts of the script, but also, but also for performance and for, 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 for Taha. And... Um, so yeah, and then he came down, actually he came down to South Africa. It's the only place he's managed to be other than in the last 20 years, other than in Mauritania or Guantanamo, was he managed to get a visa to come to South Africa. And that was wonderful for the crew and everyone, you know, the actors to meet him. And, and uh, he's a lovely, lovely, lovely man. And he came to the set, but he found it very difficult. You know, he, well, first of all, he went around the set and he said, he said to the production designer, you know, that, that, that um, door is six inches too high that window was at a foot to the left. You know, he remembered everything because he'd been in those spaces so, so long in those simulations. He remembered every little thing. That step's two inches too high. You know, my bed was three inches short. I mean, those sorts of things. So we hurriedly tried to fix a few things to make them absolutely accurate. But he, but, but he also just found it very difficult. And after we were filming that, the first day that he came in the in Guantanamo set, he, you know, he lasted half an hour and had to go home. And he was, you know, he felt quite, traumatized by it because obviously as you can imagine he's got PTSD and it's you know it's very tough for him so we tr as far as sort of showing him cuts and things we showed him and really what was for the Mauritanian wasn't it so it was for the stuff at yeah. the front where Tahar is playing him and talking to the police chief we needed to shave that down in length uh, but neither of us speak that particular type of Arabic is very particular to Mauritania so we had to guess where the end of a that might be and um, make our cut and then send it to to him and ask if it made sense. That was the only real input that he had. I mean, he was very involved in all the script, but then when it came to the film, he saw the Mauritanian bits, all the bits that so they had speaking in Mauritanian dialect. And then he didn't see it till the film was pretty much, it wasn't actually, we didn't mix it, but I think it was pretty much the locked cut. And then I flew out to show it to him, I think in July or August, in Mauritania and got as far as Istanbul then got turned back they wouldn't let me in the country oh, so sure. I did I had to send it to him and he, he watched it on his own with some of his family which I, was not ideal wasn't what I wanted but um and he really you know he really loves the film but I, I don't actually know if he's watched the full torture sequence I think it's too painful for him I, I, I from some of the things he said I think he sort of he always ducks out at that moment and comes back for the end <laughs>